I bet my exhausted subscribers will by now be saying, surely there's not still more bunkum to come from Christopher Monkton? Well, afraid so, but I'll cut things short by making this the last debunking video on the error-prone Viscount and just deal with this. At the moment, the polar ice caps of Mars are melting. There has been warming noticed on the surface of Jupiter, on one of the moons of Neptune, even on far distant Pluto, all at the same time. And why is this? Because astronauts are taking their 4 by 4s up into space? No, it's because the Sun, as we'll see, has been remarkably active. The obvious question for sceptics like me to ask is, if it's so obviously the Sun, why do climate scientists say it isn't? Isn't that worth checking? Well, it turns out, as usual, climate scientists know something that Christopher Monckton doesn't. The planets are not all warming, as I pointed out in a previous video. And solar physicists don't measure the output of the Sun by looking at the temperature of the moons of Neptune. We can measure solar irradiance directly, and much more accurately, from Earth, as Moncton now ably demonstrates. Now, let's go to this very interesting paper by Sami Solanke. He's, he's one of the most expert solar physicists. He's very balanced. He doesn't take either side in this debate. What he says is the level of solar activity during the past 70 years is exceptional and the previous period of equally high activity occurred more than 8,000 years ago. We find that during the past 11,400 years, the Sun has spent only of the order of 10% of the time at a similarly high level of magnetic activity, and almost all of the earlier high activity periods were shorter than the present episode. So there is clear evidence Wait, that the Sun... Wait, why did you stop reading? That's all Moncton gives his audience, and that's all he shows on his screen. He doesn't show them the actual paper, otherwise they might start reading it for themselves. So let's go back to it and see what Solanke and his fellow researchers say in the very next sentence. Although the rarity of the current episode of high average sunspot numbers may indicate that the sun has contributed to the unusual climate change during the 20th century, we point out that solar variability is unlikely to have been the dominant cause of strong warming during the past three decades. What Solanke found was that with carbon dioxide levels fairly stable, the Sun has been the main driver of climate over the last 11,000 years, as would be expected. And even in the early 20th century, global temperatures correlate very well with varying solar irradiance. If we look at the graph in Solanke's 2003 paper, we can see that global temperatures climbed even higher when solar irradiance climbed to their peak between 1920 and 1950. But since the 1950s, solar irradiance has maintained that high without going any higher. In fact, some researchers say it's even declined slightly. So temperatures should have followed, as they have done for the past 11,000 years. But they don't. Something else is pushing them up. So Solanke's research fits perfectly with what other climate scientists have discovered. For the first time, temperatures are not following the variations of solar activity. Even the charts Moncton uses to try to support his claim that solar activity is causing global temperatures to rise show that cannot be the case. He based this chart on one in this paper by Hathaway and Wilson. Here's the original. It also shows the recent decline in solar activity very clearly based on sunspot numbers. Moncton pressed on with yet another paper he doesn't seem to have read. But the solar physicists, you might take Scafetta and West, say, in uh, 2008, they attribute 69% of all the recent global warming to the Sun. Most solar physicists agree. The International Astronomical Union 2004 had a symposium on it. They concluded that that was the case. They said we're now going to get global cooling because the Sun's turned itself off for a bit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's too much here to deal with in just one hit. Let's debunk this one error at a time. But the solar physicists, you might take Scafetta and West, say, in uh, 2008, they attribute 69% of all the recent global warming to the Sun. No, they don't. Scavetta's paper doesn't attribute 69% of warming to the Sun at all. It says the Sun could account for as much as 69% of warming since 1900. Most solar physicists agree. No, they don't. Scafetta and West's maximum figure is at the extreme high end of the range. Most solar physicists put the figure much lower. The International Astronomical Union 2004 had a symposium on it. They concluded that that was the case. Now, this claim was just so extraordinary, you'd have to be a die-hard Moncton groupie not to be sceptical of it.
If a major body like the International Astronomical Union had departed from established science in this way, it would be headline news. It would completely undermine a theory that's been at the heart of climate science for over a century. How come I can't find any mention of it except in Moncton's presentations? So I did some digging. I couldn't find a record of the 2004 symposium, either online or at my local university library. Professor John Abraham, who's done a lot of work debunking Moncton, had contacted the Astronomical Union and received a denial of Moncton's claim. But unfortunately, under my own rules, I can't use this as a source. I was going to contact the Astronomical Union myself when someone referred me to a recent TV documentary that spilled the whole thing wide open. The International Astronomical Union in 2004 had a symposium on it. They concluded that that was the case. The International Astronomical Union have never agreed this. This argument was put forward by one paper out of 241 submitted to the symposium in 2004. It didn't represent the, f the view of the, of the whole union. And you said in your talk no, that it, that it did. It was the view of the whole union. The International Astronomical Union in 2004 had a symposium on it. They concluded that that was the case. There was no such conclusion made. So there was no such paper. Which you there. agreed in an email to this gentleman, Spencer David. He put these accusations to you and you said, you are right. So you, you admitted that you had made a mistake. Well, if what I said gives the impression that this was the view of the entire, and that was the word you used, but I didn't in my speech, uh, IAU, then I'm very happy to make it clear that it wasn't the view of the entire IAU. Okay, so you made a mistake. So, if you like, I made a mistake. No, not if you like. This isn't a matter of opinion. It's just plain wrong, like nearly every other Moncton claim. In fact, I'm not even going to bother debunking what remains of Moncton's claims because I think by now he's been thoroughly discredited. So how has my Moncton Buncombe series affected the people whose cause Moncton is trying to champion? Are there any Moncton fans left? Yep, despite clear evidence to the contrary, there are still people who don't think a Viscount, a politician with a classics education from Cambridge, can possibly misunderstand or misrepresent <coughs> climate science. Ah, Lord Nelbury, do please uh, come this way, Your Lordship. I have your table over here by the window, as usual. It is the modus operandus of bought and paid for corporate scum like Pothole of 54 to search for tiny mistakes in the output of skeptics. They have vast resources. No, you don't need vast resources to check Moncton's claims. All you need is a healthy degree of skepticism. I didn't search for tiny mistakes, I simply checked Moncton's claims and they turned out to be wrong. Anyone can do the same thing. Watch a Moncton video, look up the sources he cites and check them. The reason so many Moncton fans don't do this isn't because of a lack of resources, it's because of a lack of skepticism. But Eric has more. Moncton made a mistake. OK, I magnified one mistake. Moncton made two small mistakes, that's all. Oh. I magnified two small mistakes. Well, I hate to be contrary, as you know. I have a maths physics degree from a Russell Group University. OK, that may well be, but let's use that maths degree to do a quick refresher course in counting. Greetings! It is I, the count. Moncton says he advised Margaret Thatcher on climate change. He didn't. He says he wrote a peer-reviewed scientific paper. He didn't. He says the Earth has been cooling. It hasn't. He says Olaf Johannesson found that overall Greenland ice wasn't melting. He didn't. He says there's been no systematic loss of sea ice in the Arctic. There has. He says there's no correlation between temperatures and CO2 over the last 500 million years. There is. He says a Precambrian ice planet shows that CO2 has no effect on climate. It shows the opposite. He says there's been no change in Himalayan glaciers for 200 years. There has. He says only one Himalayan glacier is retreating. No, lots of them are. He quotes a Linzen paper to claim that forcing due to CO2 is 1.135 watts per square meter. Linzen's paper shows forcing is three times higher. He confuses forcing with sensitivity. He says Dr. Pinker's research shows that a loss of cloud cover is responsible for recent warming. She says it shows no such thing. He misquotes Kevin Tremberth, Justice Burton, Murari Lal, and Sir John Houghton. He says planets with a high albedo are cooler than planets with a low albedo. Wrong. And in the video you're looking at, we've seen that he got Scafetta's paper wrong, and he got Solanke's paper wrong. He says some planets are warming because of the sun. No, they're not. And he said the International Astronomical Union has declared that the sun's responsible for recent warming. It didn't. Well, how are you, Lord Melbury? How are you then? All right, mate? How's me old bucker? 
I don't have a degree in mathematics from a Russell Group university, but I'd say that's more than a couple of mistakes. And these aren't just minor nitpicked errors, these are the most egregious falsehoods that make up Moncton's entire case against climate science. These are the things Moncton insists the scientists have got wrong. Why do those who are peddling this threat have to lie? Stop telling lies. So however many lies are uttered. But it turns out he's the one that got things wrong, so much so that it would probably be easier to find things he actually got right. So I'll extend that challenge to Moncton fans. Find something that Moncton managed to get right, not the dates of papers or correctly identifying the names of the towns where he was speaking, but something that contradicts climate scientists who conclude that the Earth is warming and that carbon dioxide is largely responsible. But please, before you simply copy and paste a Moncton claim, do something you might never have done before. Check it. If he doesn't give a source, write and ask him for his source. Then check that. You're allowed to cheat, by the way. Check other sites that debunk Moncton's claims, like John Abraham's website and Peter Sinclair's excellent video series on YouTube. And check their sources, too. I started this Moncton Bunkum series by asking why people believe him, and after watching hours of Moncton presentations, I can't understand why anybody who's sceptical would believe him. As we've seen, he clearly doesn't know that much basic climatology. He gets his calculations hopelessly wrong. He misunderstands or doesn't properly read most of the scientific papers he quotes, and he continually contradicts himself. But we're not dealing with an audience full of sceptics. We're dealing for the most part with people who are willing to cheer anyone who echoes their own beliefs loudly and confidently enough. Ironically, these people like to call themselves sceptics. Sorry guys, but being a sceptic means you check what you're told. It doesn't mean you believe what someone says simply because he's got a title, or he sounds confident of his facts, or he's good at Latin. So if you want to be a real sceptic, take up my challenge. Check what Moncton says, check his sources, and find something he actually managed to get right.